Don't turn it apart. Turn it on. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's turn it apart. Welcome to the teardown of the Radix Delta 2002 satellite receiver. That is analog satellite receiver. I scored that thing in my last scrap heap scavenge card here, link in the description. And as you saw, <laughs> the LED display, if it's LED, it's pretty burnt out. So yeah, this thing is beside there is no terrestrial, uh, no analog satellite television anymore on this planet, at least not here for Europe. Uh, this thing is pretty useless, though I saw an eBay listing, somebody trying to sell this for 29 bucks. Uh, more interesting stuff on the back side. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. So, intermediate frequency signal from the low noise block in your satellite antenna goes in here at about, yeah, 1 to 2 gigahertz. Uh, signal to your analog television set goes out here at about 500 to 1 gig and uh, yeah you also have uh, analog <laughs> television uh, input here that's uh, the same range uh, 500 to 1 gigahertz for UHF and lower in the VHF range. Um, you can trim the output via a little pot here. Or maybe it's a trimmable capacitor, we will see. Uh, you got a change audio output analog, of course. Uh, mains AC, no external fuse. And you got two SCART connectors. One for the TV and one for a decoder VCR. Even back then, in the age of analog television, analog satellite television, they had some encoding, so you had to pay for some channels. Unbelievable, huh? No surprises at the front and on off switch, which is really standby, not really mains AC switch. Uh, channel up, down, I guess, and the rest you have to do with a remote that <laughs> didn't come with it for some reason. So, let's crack it open. Should be only two screws on each side, rather large screws. It's, I mean, consumer electronics, so every screw counts. I lied, I just saw there's a third screw. And we're in. <laughs> and while we're at it, let's get rid of that stupid front plate here too. It can't be that hard, just some snap-in stuff. Nothing to see here, so yeah. <coughs> Let's throw that away. I mean, nice metal case. And now we have a good view. And yeah, <laughs> that's the almost dead LCD that we saw, LED that we saw in green. Cool. This looks like the receiver for the remote, which doesn't look like an IR receiver. Oh, we have a closer look. Uh, get the board out, probably. Uh, our <clears throat> standby switch, and there is a oh yeah uh, board later on. Channel up, channel down. Uh, big. Heat sink and a transformer for the power supply, which is fused, of course. So AC coming in here, fuse, no input filtering at all, uh, goes to the transformer. Yeah, center, no, uh, actually, four wires coming from the transformer. That's interesting. Uh, and yeah, uh, we go down to the board level. <laughs> 
So, that board was <laughs> pretty good screwed down in there. Okay, uh, there's really, besides the transformer, nothing left here in the chassis, which is, yeah, consumer electronic. Very cheaply produced, but effective. So, as I mentioned, AC comes in here, is fused, goes back to the transformers, and yeah, from the transformer, four lines come back in here. Then we have probably, we'll have a detailed look on that later, two voltage regulators, I guess, because they are marked U402 and U401, not T, not transistors, a lot of filtering, and that's the power supply. Business end here, satellite comes in into a can and I, the magic happens here in the can. That's the output to your <laughs> television. That's where the other magic happens. Uh, the chinch connectors for audio out, um, I guess this is an audio chip. Uh, it has a Mitsubishi stamp on it and a quartz. We will try if we can still find that. There's a Philips chip here and there is one from LGS, which is obviously doing all the control stuff, the electronic, you know, the uh, user interface, the display. And that's indeed, we can zoom in here, uh, infrared receiver. And here we have a little U that has been scrapped down. No, I have to clean that up. Okay, uh, yeah, SCART output, of course. This is all r a few megahertz, relative low frequency. And there's an option for a third SCART connector here, not present. And <laughs> even, oh, uh, yeah, you won't believe it. The standby LED <laughs> was optional. <laughs> That thing was obviously built down to a price and you saw all the jumpers here on the top of the board because it's just single-sided and we all almost miss that little guy here. We have a look at that. That looks like some fancy flash memory working maybe together with uh, that one to store your program settings. Anyway, let's zoom into the different parts. On that heatsink, we have some classics. An L7812 12 volt positive regulator. And another classic L7805 positive 5 volt regulator. So, yeah, just a 12 volt rail and a 5 volt rail. So, AC comes in here, really two independent secondary windings from the transformer. 5 volts gets rectified here via four discrete diodes for bridge rectifier. Filter capacitor made by Daewoo. Uh, regulator here and then one of them is uh, after that regulator. And 12 volts the same, but the discrete diodes of the full bridge rectifier are not stand up, they are directly on the board, so probably less power here, filter, regulation, filter again. And might I draw your attention to this little guy here? This is a Sina diode and a rather large resistor, so they are creating, in fact, a <coughs> fingers third rail here somewhere below 12 volt or below 5 volt. I didn't care to look it up because its only purpose is to feed via that bridge into the satellite can. Let's have a look at the <laughs> user front end here. So this is indeed an infrared uh, receiver. There are some passives here and transistors to make sense of the signal. We have an EEPROM here. That's an, oh, let me, ST24C32. That's a whopping four kilobyte with an I squared C bus, okay? Uh, yeah, some multiplexing transistors for the three digits of our seven segment LED display. And then we have the processor. Yeah, an MCU. 
that uh let me see an lg gsm 90 c 52 dash g301 yeah i've looked up the chips beforehand sorry uh, it has a whopping eight kilobytes of masked rom so yeah you order them with a program already burnt in it runs at 12 megahertz or at can at least and it has an amazing 256 bytes of ram and they don't even bother to give it a real crystal here for the oscillator so i'm not sure if they run it at a full 12 megahertz at the back end with the chinch sound output the scars and so on we'll find that thing here from mitsubishi it's an M35011-015P and that's a screen character and pattern display controller. Don't get too excited. It has its all crystal because it's generating a PAL compatible signal at 17.73 megahertz. It has a 64 character set and can display up to 24 by 10 characters <laughs> really and yeah that's all analog support stuff here the thing only delivers composite uh, video but uh, in the SCART stuff here you also need to do RGB so you have here somehow yeah generating RGB from composite video because most things here come in threes so RGB RGB, yeah, you see, it's it's not always completely symmetrical, but it comes in threes, maybe in fourth, because yeah, one composite signal. <clears throat> anyway, uh, probably in conjun conjunction with that, we have this Philips HEF 4053BP. That's a triple single pole double throw analog switch. A uh, triple, of course, um, yeah, probably switching from one RGB source to another. And again, RGB, uh, some transistors here for amplification or whatever. And finally, uh, on the back here, we'll find and yeah i won't zoom down here because i had a hard time making out the markings under a microscope uh we'll find uh siemens tda 6170x satellite sound interfrequency chip so it can take the intermediate frequency signal from your lnb and extract the sound from it because we have sound output here <laughs> and top side yeah it's just below here it has its own four megahertz quartz well i guess i can't put it off any longer we have to crack open the cans and this will definitely be a destructive process or not that was simple the side not so simple yep yeah on the back of the board sorry this is going to be shaky there's really nothing to see but for oh i do this with zoom uh yeah some high frequency delay lines i mean we're still talking here about, uh, what was it, uh, 10 giga, uh, a few gigahertz uh, intermediate frequency from the satellite LMB. The real action happens here on the other side. So one to two gigahertz from the LNB in your satellite antenna comes in here, probably some pre-amplification. Pre and then we have here a Toshiba TD6726F 2.7 gigahertz frequency synthesizer for satellite TV. And by the way, it's controlled by I2C. Yeah, from our microcontroller. 
So we generate another frequency here and we, between one and two megahertz, and we mix it probably here, yeah, the, the partition here with a big tranny, and this is a transistor, just tr uh, three pins. And then we are finally down to our <laughs> analog TV video signal, a few megahertz. And this is demodulated by that chip here. Yeah, it's still frequency modulated. And this is a Philips TDA8012 low power PLL FM demodulator for satellite TV. And finally, we get our composite video signal, which goes down somewhere here to the board. That leaves us with the UHF VHF can here. I hope it opens as easily as the other one. Not quite, but it's okay. So on the side with the antenna input and the TV output, there's not much uh, a trimmer here, not use accessible. And that was the trimmer to yeah adjust your output channel. <laughs> a trimmer in the back. Uh, here we have a little tranny and some coils here, high frequency coils, of course. And that's it on that side. To my great disappointment, at the back there's just an unmarked chip, but you can guess what that can does. Yeah, it feeds through the antenna input. No, the antenna input was on the bottom. It feeds that through to the television output, and somehow this portion here is frequency modulating a carrier signal between 500 and 1 gigahertz with the composite video signal that is fed up here from the board. Yeah, that television signal with just a few megahertz bandwidth. And because of the great disappointment with that unmarked chip, I went berserker on that little sub can here that contained the trimmer. And the trimmer is of course a trimmable capacitor. Yeah, just here. Oh, let me show that three plates rotating in and out of two fixed plates. Oops. And now I've thrown away the little coil that was also included here. So that's an LC circuit that's probably oscillating at the UHF frequency of 500 to 1 gigahertz. Trimmable. And that was the teardown of the Radix Delta 2002 analog satellite receiver. I found it actually quite interesting. I hope you did too. Till next time. Bye.